Yeah, so um, today I'm going to share about the how we use the power as porters in uh, during the pandemic response in New Zealand. So um, today agenda, I was up with the a power basic high level overview of the power as porters. Here I'm not going to go into the deep into the power as porters. It's mainly the really high level of the power as porters, and followed by the challenges that we have in the pandemic and how we overcome those issues and challenges. And then finally, um, it's more like a lesson learned in during this pandemic and how do we accelerate the border development so to deliver them quickly. <clears throat> so let's start with about the power as portals. Um, the um, in this morning, the Rami have a cover a really high level overview of the power as portals. And uh, basically, you got a power platforms and the data vest at the back end where your data are stored. And the power as portals, they, they open up the a new uh, capabilities for the external phasing website. So this is a really tightly integrate with the power platforms and without any extra effort. So any the data, this the all integrated back to the dataverse straight away and without match config uh, customizations or configurations. So basically you don't need to do anything. And um, because of that, is a um, there's also the power platforms of power power as portals also encourage the customer self service where customer can log in to the portal. Maybe sometimes anonymously they can use it. Uh, sometimes they may need to log into the portal and the track the like so, so, so like a submit the applications. So like this is a digitized content. They fill up the forms and submit the applications via the electronic form. And because it's a self-service portal, they can also retrieve the data back from the database to track the progress of the applications. So that reduce the you know interactions with the like a contest center. You don't need to call to the contest center to see hey where is my applications and what is happening with my applications. All they need to do is they log into the portal and see where is the applications. And also is as because this is a pen as um, let's skip in the next one. And um, so this power as portal is mainly a configuration base. Uh, you can also configure it. And honestly, the the one that we I work in the like a one and a half years, the uh, the uh, pandemic related projects, the the power as portal is about ninety percent of them is totally configurations. And obviously there will be some you know JavaScripts to manipulate something, but most of the things they saw the a configuration base. And one of the things you can build these forms and the web pages just in an hour. <coughs> also, is a just because of the configurations, is a not just for the a power local, no local platforms or the citizen developer, and you can also extend the power as portals for the professional developer to deliver a highly customized a web applications and to provide a better customer experience. And sometimes you need to do it to, you know, um, meet the business requirement. <coughs> so um, the one of the challenge, these are the challenges is say we have in the pandemic, during the pandemic, and this is not a really the technical challenges, it's more about the, you know, um, the the over the high level challenges that we have during the pandemic. So one of the things is that the pandemic is never predictable, right? So it's always changing. The rules are always changing. You know, today's rules will be different from tomorrow, and tomorrow they announce something. Next week they will change that rule again. Because based on the situations, it's nothing is predictable. And also, I'm not a minister, so I thought. The, the information that I have is the same as the other people, and we only know when they make an announcement. And when they make an announcement, they uh, they want they they want that policy to be delivered in a quick way. So that's become really fast paced projects, and you know really fast turnaround, and with a tight timeline. And I'll I'll share you next like uh, how tight is the timeline, and. Because of the type timeline, we need to develop the portal really quick in a quick way 
And when we say the quick, you know, quick and dirty is always the, a, like a pair, but we can do dirty as well because everything is changing. That means we need to be, we need to be able to maintain everything quite easily. So if something changed, we have to be able to fix easily. So maintenance is a very key, the main key the challenges that we have here. And also like a data or sensitivity of the data. So this a pandemic project a, in high level you know, in New Zealand, you know, even though I don't name it, probably everybody will know it. So it is more about the traveler who came into the New Zealand. So that means you will have a lot of personal information and like a, their medical histories record and even their financial information. These are the really a sensitive data. It is not just your um, uh, personal data. The medical information can be really sensitive. They may be, you know, they really emergency state and financial. They may be in the financial hardship. These all these informations are really sensitive. So securities and you know data um, uh, classifications is very important here. So the challenge this year is more like these challenges from the business side, and then, and these challenges that I will in the, in later I will go through a how we accelerate the, how we tackle these challenges, and in terms of like a technical challenge or the requirement challenge, these are the, I got I just bring out the three challenge. I, there's heaps of things. So one of the notable challenges is, that, like I said, they say you know everything's policy change and it is a quick turnaround time. And they, I remember like a, they when I first involved in that project, I, I was uh, it was the Friday four o'clock in, in the afternoon, and I was about to go to the bar, and someone called me and hey, can you have a look at the something like they want to build up the form for the. Public to submit the applications and store the data in the back end, and uh, later use that you know data to build the business process flow to support the uh, application processing in the back end. So this sounds like a really good use case for the Power Platform. So you have the database in the back end, you have like an automation engine like Power Automate and the business process flow, <coughs> and you have the Power as portals which can serve as the a public facing website. So I said, oh yeah, so we can have a look. And then when I go into the meeting at four o'clock and they give me like a 20 page word document. <coughs> that word document basically is the application document. And it's just like a visa applications. And in the previous slides, I, I, I described the timeline is only tight and they want it in the weekend. And they give me on the Friday and they want it on the Monday morning. So. That's the, the one of the challenges that we have. Like a, a, like I said, everything is changing and any things that we receive is really tight timeline. And because of that, I, I, we do, we do work around the, over the weekend and like a build the forms, like a use events form, web forms, and build the, build the um, environment, build the portal and start working on that. And we have get it done on Monday. And again, this platform is already used in the in the government, so that that makes the process a lot easier. So we don't have to go through um, a lot of process, even though we still have to go through, but not too much. And over the over the year, they see this this just a one form. Then over the year, we extend it into the four different. A forms so for different application they can submit it through the portal and over the year that is not just the portal it is also supporting the decision process in the back end for the um, back end officers so this is really like a you know requirement come out just straight away and you work it out over the type timeline and you deliver it quickly Another challenge that we have is um, this is also the uh, kind of like a, a limitation with the power support. And you know, when you submit the application, like a visa applications, you have to submit supporting document, right? So that's the part of the process. So it's just for the example, like a visa application, you need to submit these documents. And you know, when you come to the, I go through the, the. Uh, 
the Panama process, that you still have to submit some of the your know, medical information and your financial informations. And when you submit the fines, the we prioritize poly that you can store the fine into the um, note or the SharePoint or Azure blob. And one of the requirements is that they don't want to receive any virus. And honestly, um, in the PowerX portal or the Power Apps, you can upload the virus, but the, since the virus are still in the blob storage, uh, there's not executable and there's technically there's no impact on the applications. It is just the policy that they don't want to receive the virus. And so now we have a look at like a different options like antivirus scans or we can upload the files into the SharePoint because SharePoint has the, the built-in antivirus capability. And we also have a the in-house antivirus API to scan the virus. And we decided to go down with the in-house API. And when the file is uploaded, you know, on the idea scenario, you want to scan the virus straight away and say no to the to the customers or the user. And you don't want to, you know, it is the best case scenario, right? So you upload it, wrong file, so you straight away know this is not correct. But we know in the Paris polis this doing the kind of real time things, you need to build a different like companion app to support it. So we here we want to make it really simple and you know without com without complicating the stuff. So we go back to the business and say ask a few questions. These are okay, if you have the virus, what you don't want to what is the the main things that you don't want to have the virus? So is it you you don't want to see the virus or is it you don't want them to upload the virus? So and when we press the question is basically they don't want to deal with the virus. It doesn't matter whether it is uploaded or not. So we come up with like a, a, a say, okay, so then that's fine. So if, because we cannot go, we are not going to re real time scan the virus. So we will allow them to upload the virus and we ran the, like a power automate flow and call the third party API to scan the virus. And then so once the virus is completed, scan is completed, uh, based on the result that uh, we were, we will create this, the, you know, like a different statuses and and assign it to the a uh, send it to the users, the backend users. That means like if they as soon as they upload it, that they nobody can see those a uh, files or the applications which serve the purpose. You know, they can only see the applications that has been passed that has passed the virus. So one of the key things is, is not just the we need to work with the business, it's not just the platform. You know, we know the platform limitations and we need to explain to them and give the alternative uh, approach to reach the, you know, the business, the optimal business process. And at the same time, we're not compromising too much on the implementations and it works well. So this is the one of the a challenge, and you know we tend to do the what customer has to do. But this, if you know it's the limitations, if it is easy way to do it, we we learn that like a, we should go back to the business, educate it, and get it done in a quick way. And again, this use like a lot of like a low code, no code um, uh, things like uh, using the power automate cloud flow to. Um, call the different API and scan through these things. So it's not like a, a not really, you know, like a pro professional development and anybody can do that. Another challenge that we have is the, this uh, challenge is um, online payment. So you you will notice like um, this online payment is, is, you know, any portal, any applications that you probably have to pay and, a lot of things. I think about like a two years ago, we have the same uh, same topic in the uh, Dynamic 365 Saturday, uh, using like a companion app. I mean, which is great. And but here we want the complex. We don't want a lot of complexity, and we want the simplicity. And we we want to that, that we want to offer the, this capability, but with the least effort. 
And then we we find it, we figure it out like a lot of like a different uh, payment. And then one of the payment providers called a WinCave, and and we found out that can be then using a plugin. So that's the only one plugin that we developed in the the whole pandemic response in the project. And this is standalone. <laughs> And that plugins make an online payment, and you know the rest are the uh, really low code, no code base. And yeah, so you can see like I mean this is the top three kind of like a technical challenge that we have in the in the in the Paris supporters. and yep, this uh, this pretty good uh, platforms, and then we can get it end in the. Uh, local local way, and <clears throat> but you know let's now let's say uh, there's a lot of the like, quick development and quick turnarounds, and so we need to come up with like a really quickly deliver the solutions in a short time frame, and you know when we say quick, it's not it, it shouldn't be the dirty as well because it is we need to maintain it in the future, and like I said, it's everything is changing, so basically you are maintaining all the time, and. <clears throat> When we say the accelerating this development, so first we need to create kind of like a, a common pattern. So what a common pattern is more like a, a reusable pattern that you can you can use this. You define the pattern in the first place. You make sure everybody followed it, and so that it is easy to understand. And you know, when the same pattern is repeating again and again, then you don't need to to learn it, and you know, you don't need the extra effort to understand. New things. So let's say today we have the one form. To today we have four form. Next day they come up with like a two different form. We would create a pattern that can that can be like a future proof, like a setting from like a structure of the solutions. The solution structure structure of solution means like a how do we structure these the components for the powers portals in the in the backend, and also like when we create a web page for the metadata JavaScript, like a Starting from like a naming conventions, how do we use it? Uh, is it should we start with um, you know the entity or table, and what is the actions, and where do we use the JavaScript, or how do we write the JavaScript, and how do we stretch out the JavaScript, and when do we use the metadata? So we need to have to define these pattern really early, or you know, it's not, it means like it will change over the time because you know you learn you learn through the journey, so you need to have a, that common set of patterns so that we can repeat it quite easily. That is one of the key that can accelerate the development in the portal. And also we start with like a something called like a entity permissions. Because I, re, I remember like a, a year a year ago, like there's a one like a big article about the the data exposed in the portal. So before even before that, we we have the practice like we don't create a form without taking the entity permissions because uh, unless this is an anonymous form, then of course we don't need it. But anytime we create entity permission, must be there. That means we are basically unfolding. You are starting to think about the entity permissions and rules. So we don't encourage to create a a form without entity permissions and not just even for the POC. So that sets you a rule that you have to start thinking about all this stuff. But the good thing is it is the default now, so no, you don't, there's no um, entity permission is already the enable for forms or the list, so you don't need to worry about too much. And another thing that accelerating the development is a you need to we need to build like a reusable library. It is a you know any web development, you have the JavaScript, right? Because Java and you have to use the JavaScript to customize and you know, the form, customize the page and customize the user experience. And when we say that you you read the libraries, it is kind of like a creating a separate set of like a config.js. Basically it is like a constant in the the donut projects, like a constant file where you still like your like a, Messaging like any constant that you want to store, and also you create. We also encourage to create a common .js, uh, which is basically like a common functionality that can be used across the different pages. And 
these libraries, they it just a in the in in the beginnings, it may have only like a, a few lines, but over the over the over a year, that this grew into the a lot of um, you know like reusable uh, configurations and reusable uh, um, functions in the JavaScripts. So that means that we can we can reuse it all across the uh, different pages without you know without reinventing the wheel. And the last thing is accelerating. Another way to accelerate the development is the uh, use of the extent using the proven frameworks. So when I say this, I, recently the web API in the Power S portal is generally available. And this is a web. When I say the web API, you can do create, retrieve, update, and delete from the web. Um, Power S portals without using entity forms or and lists or uh, basics forms or advanced forms. But previously, only these forms are the only way that you can communicate back to the backend. Like a, if you want to create the data, you have to either use basic form or advanced forms. But today, that you can use the API and you can build your own custom form and call the API to interact with the data. So when we say that I could to do this, Things like a some some tend to create the like a really JavaScript, and you know they use the create the document DOM and the JavaScripts, like they start building like a table div and the JavaScripts, which becoming really I would say yeah difficult to maintain it and difficult to understand it, and so. Using like a proven framework like views, which I will show the demo in the next. <coughs> you can see how easily you can build a form from the scratch really easy. And it's also simpler and easier to maintain. And because you know, when you start creating DOM in a JavaScript, it's a nightmare. I remember like I, when I started working on the PCF control. Uh, all the scripts that you have to, all the things you have to cr create from JavaScript, but uh, using something like a React, which is much easier to um, deal with the UI and UAs. But um, and in the next slide, so in the next demo, that I will show you exactly how it can be done in the portal. And also, you can also involve the modern web developer. So this power apps. Previously, all the dynamic used to be for, you know, like function and technical, and you have the a dynamic 365 professional, like a developer, and it it moved to the next phase. It's moved to the like no code, low code, and citizen developer, and you know, we are we are you know involving more people. You know, it used to be just the dynamic 365 specialist. And now we are involving like a, a citizen dev, a low code, no code approach. And we can what then now we have the question of why we can use the like a modern web developer, like a who really good at the developing the web pages and who can create the great user experience on the website and and this is a, a chance that we can involve the this modern developer into the uh, Power Apps portal development. So it is becoming all inclusive. It's not just for the Dynamic 365 to me or the Power Platform. It's be, it can you can you can encourage any like a web developer to be part of the Power Platform. So next, I'm going to show you a demo, and you know, just to compare, like, what is the like, out of the box, and what can be done in the a uh, uh, pro, the modern web ex development experience. So now, the so far, do you have any questions here? No questions. Sounds so like far. no. Okay, good. Um, can you see my screens? I'm sharing my a make up power apps. Yes. Good. Thank you. So um, the 
in the acceleration accelerating the port of development, I told that the we need to come up with like a solution stretches. When I say the solution stretches, if you can see here, I have the table called venue and we got the views and the forms. And every time we create a an entity that are going to export through the portal, we always create a form start with like a portal just to tell us this is the form that used in the portal and it's much easier to you know visualize and when you select the when you create the form it's much easier to select it same thing for like a view so we always start with like a portal in the front so we know this is the this is the view that they're going to use in the portal otherwise you know you might accidentally change it and you might not know that it's impacting the the public fading site so um these are the some of the things that you can you can you can start using it. I mean, the, this rules can be anything. You can prefer with port it, and you can change it. But the idea is to give it some specific keywords so that you know that it's using for the port. It. And here, um, I'll just go to the uh, page. Um, so this list venue view is basically. A, a view that you saw in the previous screens called the Porter All Views, and this page is basically a out of the box configuration base. Uh, not really all of us based on the configuration, so I can create a new venue. Um, move to, and I'm creating the record. And once you create it, it the updated things, the updated that the, the, the venue you created will be sure in the list, and you have capability to delete that. So this is a pretty basic um, um, capability, right? So if you are happy with that, go for it. It's not a problem. And but the, here you will see to create a view, to create a venue. You got this. Um, one click, two click, and you got three click, four click, five click. So um, if you are just creating like a one or two, it is not really a problem. But if you're doing like a, like hundreds of records, dealing with hundreds of records, and if you want to change the UI, then you don't. You basically, you have to use the JavaScript and manipulate the document object model, which is not really the idea. Uh, you, we, what we should be doing is we should be building the UAs in the first place without uh, manipulating the existing UI. So, and you will see this like you may not have the inline edit capabilities to do that. And and I know this the PCF the power component frameworks going to is available in the PowerS portals, but I like to see it go with a different approach, even though I, I like to do the PCF in the backend, but doing the PCF on the portals to me is a bit too much. Eh? And so you have seen here like I can create a new venue after created the venue is added to the list and I can delete it. So I'm going on next page. I'm going to show how I can create a custom page using an API and do almost exactly the same. So I will switch to the next page here. So this page is totally kind of like a customized, just using the the API to do the same capabilities. And here you can see I can just straight away edit. And the, this a list get refreshed. And I can do test, I can do. So you can see, what the first thing you will notice is the user experience and it is really first you don't have no you have no refresh you have no waiting it's just keep you know just keep doing that just keep going on it's quite easy and here if i remove that and just that's nice i know it's more like a single page applications and 
uh, later I would in in a moment I would I would show you the how um, it's the den in the backend. So you can see like a imagine like a you have the you have to go through a lot of like created lists or if you want to the inline capabilities here is it's not quite possible but with this uh, we can do it quite easily on the using the like a modern javascript framework and library so this board page is called the apn demo So in the web templates, so basically I'm using like a Vue.js, which is um, the reason I pick up the Vue is, you know, we have like a React, you got like an Angular and Vue. And I find Vue is the really uh, lightweight and quick and easy. Mm -hmm. And one of the challenges that we have during the pandemic, because that is the government agency, you know, you we are not allowed to install like a Visual Studio. And if you even if you can install the Visual Studio on another machines, you cannot log in using that organization account to log into the Visual Studio. So basically, our hands are tied. So you you can't do much, and we need to find a way that can be we can do the development quick and easy way. We don't have to, like a full blown development environment, and you can see here like I use the view, then I can also use like a different libraries to do whatever I want. Like a, this is mainly for web, web REST API call. And I will skip to the all the HTML part. And here you will see a, for the dev, you will see we have a bit of method to do the, add the venue, remove the venue, and get the venue. And basically here is mainly a, all the data access layer, you can see that, and then we bind into the model. And then here, it's pretty easy. I mean, it's just a, a normal web API and call, and you call to the web API endpoint and pass the JSON, and do after that, do whatever you want. And the interesting part is here. <coughs> so usually, like I said, in the um, a, a lot of the paper, they like to create a loop through the table in the JavaScript, but using like a view, you can bind the like a row into the whatever you have the object and then let it handle it. So basically we are just building a template and I want to show this and the view will handle it. You don't even need to repopulate the a document object model and the library will handle it for you. So basically here you can see this is a list. We got the header and this is the rule that we want to display. So is it that simple? And we don't need to, like I said, we don't need to go through all the, H, the JavaScripts to do that. And again, on the like a form, so we got like a name, a date, and when we click at add, add button, so we call the add venue, which is basically a method here, which is going to create a venue in the, through the web API. Right, so it is, um, a new way of the development, I would say, and you know, to you can customize as you want, and I'm sure like we can even do the kind of like inline update, and like edit a grid, something like that, here very easily, and without complicating a lot of stuff, and here with a, a clear separations between the your your code and the and the design that we have. And this one is built in probably an, an hour. Uh, this page is built. I'm not a, a proficient in view. I'm still learning it, but I can as you know, if I can build in an hour or two, any like a professional web developer can handle it really easily and they will know a lot more library than me, and they can make it, they can make the user experience a lot better than this. It just they just showing what this platform is capable to do. So now um I you can still see my uh, slide, right? 
Uh, we can see your web browser at the moment. Oh, okay, cool. So I will share it again. Hopefully you can see it now. Yep, that's better. Yep, cool. And so this is a really high level demo of like what the out of the box and the how the you can bring the modern professional developer web developer to do more exciting stuff on the portal. And now we have done a release with um, Gwent, and there's a few upgrade, uh, a few enhancement to the portal. One is the core platforms. Now you will be able to search the, uh, you can use the Dynamo search on the Power portals. And you can also, it also support the more columns, so that's just like an image and fine. So, you know, Currently, we can we can only upload the file to the node. So if you have the file columns, then we can upload a file into the file column, and hopefully that can be used with through the power uh, power as port as web API, so that we can also use from the custom web development as well. And there's a few changes in the governance and admin governance and admin. So currently the keep it, auditing capability. It is not the auditing capability in the Power Platform. It's more about the auditing capability in Office 3 Security Center that can will be available in the portal audit log will be available there. And also you can call the like portal actions using the admin APIs. So for example, that might be quite useful for like a DevOps uh, pipeline where you want to reset the portal and restart the portal after deployment. I know some automations that that will be it would be interesting to see how you know, we can automate the, those portal because currently all the portal is you know usually most of the things are the manual process and having the the apms so that is that open up a new opportunity to enter it through the a rest endpoint and can be used for the automations and for the pro dev development, the professional development, uh, they are opening up the, um, the portal C line for the portal checker. So to go through the, you know, like a performance and um, issues and anything that's that is concerned. So it's like something like a solution checker. So they will have the uh, some suggestions where to fix the things and what to improve. Um. Yeah. So that's the um. We looking forward to from here like i'm really looking forward to see this the image and find so that could um potentially change the way we work at the um, attachments and attaching the finds in the power apps and yeah that's for now i think we got two minutes uh two or three minutes to go through any questions and hopefully that will give you a idea of what Port I can do and what really high level idea of how the port can be used for a first response projects. And um, the, regarding the uh, the custom development, I'm still trying to figure out and learn it. So hopefully I'll be able to share more on the upcoming um, meetup sessions. Awesome, awesome stuff, AK. Um, just a, a quick question on uh, ALM. Uh, so you talked a little bit about how easy it is to sort of build those pages and so on. Uh, yep. What is sort of the best practice followed to move that from one environment to the other? Um, currently, I'm kind of doing the mailing process. I know that you won't like it. <laughs> and and uh, I know that say this they say the things called a, in the CLI you can export the data and the port of data and import the port of data. So I in this project I haven't tried it. Mainly one of the reasons is the that you know we like I said our hands are quite tight to install what things that we can install in our machines. And also if we assess from the outside, there's a lot of things I cannot do. So I uh, that's something that, yeah, I I'm still figuring out what is the best way. And also, um, Microsoft have something called um, migration configuration migration too. And 
there's like a pros and cons, but currently I find the the Porter record mover from the XM tubers. That is the the best thing we can have. So I would say um it, because that is the open source, so you, we can create like a command lines that can be used in the DevOps pipelines. Yeah, sounds good because at the end of the day, it is data. Um, yeah. and there are different ways you can move your data around, but um, yeah, like you know, using the XRM toolbox um, is is the way that I, I prefer because of yeah. you know, it's it's actually designed by people who use Power Apps portals and know yeah. exactly how to package it and move it from environments. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, so we just uh, at uh, one forty, so it's time to move on to the next session. Thank you very much, AK, for this awesome presentation. Um, I know like um, we um, at the team at DXC are actually doing some liquid development. So everybody was taking screenshots and we've got a separate chat where we're like, oh, look at what he did in here. And hey, if he can do it in an hour, I can probably do it in 10 days. So we're sort of looking at uh, how we can improve ourselves in there. So thank you very much, AK, for this awesome right. session.